Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the postural deviation that is the lateral view and this time we will be covering the upper body. Now before we start with the topic, one thing I wanted to talk about is this concept of our body trying to be in equilibrium. Now whenever we are talking about posture and especially the deviations, most of the times what we need to understand is that these arise by the need of our body to be in equilibrium. Now what do I mean by this? If you take an example of Joe and if you basically reduce length of his one foot like this, okay, so he won't be in equilibrium, right? His one eye will be slightly above the other. He'll be perceiving the world slightly tilted. But with this, Joe will not carry on with his life. What his body will do is it will automatically slightly laterally flex his trunk to get him back into the light, right equilibrium. And this will happen involuntarily. That means Joe will not know about this deviation or adaptation that his body is creating by itself. Correct? So this is the main core of postural deviation that we need to understand that whenever we see a deviation, most of the times it's compensation due to some other factor. Like how we saw last time in the foot, when there was plantar flexion, right, when dorsiflexion was limited, your knee started compensating by hyperextending, right? And when your knee was flexed, what did you do? You did not carry on with your life like this. Your body automatically did hip flexion and dorsiflexion at the ankle to get you back into the equilibrium, into a space where the line of gravity is comparatively stable and in the middle, correct, neutral. But these deviations aren't always healthy because of protecting one joint, your body will end up affecting other joints which is present above and below. And that's why we call it kinematic chain, right? Because all the joints in the body are connected like a chain. Like how in chain, each segment is interlocked with each other. And if there is movement at any one segment, there can be changes in the other segments. Same way this happens with your body. And that's how the postural deviations occur. Okay, so now that we have covered, let's start with the topic. Now, in upper body, we will be talking about the spine and then again spine but uh, more of head that is the forward head posture. So first we need to understand the anterior pelvic tilt and how lordosis work. So basically when there is anterior pelvic tilt, as you can see here, there is lordosis that is created at the lumbar spine. And then to compensate this excessive lordosis where your line of gravity will go posteriorly, your kyphosis will be seen at the thoracic spine which will balance out the line of gravity and keep it in the middle. So one of the deviations that can be commonly seen in especially the back pain patients is excessive lordosis which is created due to anterior pelvic tilt, correct? And what will this do is it will increase the extensor activity at the low back. And then to keep the line of gravity anteriorly, this will be balanced by the kyphosis that is seen at the thorax, correct? So this is one of the compensation that can be seen. Whereas the other one will be posterior pelvic tilt, where your pelvis goes for a posterior tilt. This is the anterior tilt of the pelvis, right? If this is the pelvis, right? This is the posterior region and anterior. This is the anterior tilt where lordosis will increase and then can, there can be a posterior tilt. Here what will be happening is lordosis will be reduced. And when there is reduction in the lordosis at your lumbar spine, there is reduced flexibility and also reduced ability of your spine to take load. So this is the second scenario that can be seen in the patients of low back. Now, I would like to expand a little bit more on the kyphosis and the lordosis part. What lordosis exactly is, is basically there is this increased convexity in the anterior region that is the lordosis, right? And increased concavity in the posterior region. Whereas kyphosis 
is typically there is increased convexity in the posterior region and there is increased concavity in the anterior region so that is your kyphosis correct so if we see here in lordosis the line of gravity because of that excessive lordosis goes posteriorly and this is seen in cervical and lumbar region this causes compression in the posterior region so if i want to show you over here this will be your lordosis and lordosis the vertebras will be like this and there will be disc over here so if you can see there is distraction happening anteriorly and compression happening posteriorly and in kyphosis it will be exactly opposite right so there will be compression happening anteriorly and distraction happening posteriorly so in the cervical region if you take a human head there is lordosis at the cervical region kyphosis at the thoracic region and then again lordosis at the lumbar region obviously this is not perfect but this lordosis kyphosis and lordosis again is typically seen in the human body now going back to our postural deviation cervical and the lumbar region is more prone to excessive lordosis and that can ca cause compression of the posterior structures and stretch the anterior regions correct as i mentioned over here just now it can stretch the anterior structures and compress the posterior region when there is excessive lordosis right excessive lordosis whereas in kyphosis what will be happening there will be compression in the anterior region right increased kyphosis will cause compression in the anterior region and distraction in the posterior region so that's what we see over here in the thoracic and sacral region there are conditions like dogger's hump and gibbous which is caused due to osteoporosis and tuberculosis so that was about the spine moving ahead is the head right forward head posture in this head will be going anteriorly as you can see which will create excessive cervical lordosis if you can see this is the cervical lordosis that you can see correct the spine will go for lordosis in the cervical region which will create compression of the posterior zygophysial joint just now how i showed and the disc will also get compressed so basically the space in the posterior region with all the discs and all your facet joints will be compressed because of the excessive lordosis correct and this can create problems apart from this there is head on top of this right as the head goes forward okay as the head goes forward the gravity will be pulling it in this direction correct but all your extensor muscles have to work to get it back into the right position and because of this there can be extensor activity which is increased and cause ischemic muscle that is damage to the muscle because there is no proper oxygen supply to these muscles and they are overworking and due to this constant isometric contraction there can be ischemic muscles and this can create problems in your cervical spine just to create that extension torque and to fight the gravity your muscles will be acting and also the space will be reduced which can cause lot of problem in your cervical spine apart from this the shoulder can also be medially rotated which you can't really see in this lateral view i'll be i'll try to talk about this in the anterior and posterior view and there will be increased kyphosis as we can see over here apart from this with the kyphosis there will be also reduced vital capacity now you can try this on yourself you can just go into kyphosis and try to breathe okay breathe deeply just bend your around your spine in the thoracic region and try to breathe you can't breathe as much as if you keep your spine straight right you can see the clear difference so this is why the vital capacity will be reduced and the height of the person will also be reduced because he is bending forward and this can also affect the temporomandibular joint which is again a whole new story which we will cover in some other videos specifically targeted for the temporomandibular joint in upper body what we saw in upper body we saw that there is increased lordosis and kyphosis which is one of the compensation or deviation or there can be the other way around that is reduced 
lordosis and kyphosis which can cause different set of problems we also saw what are the regions that are more prone for kyphosis that is the thoracic and sacral region and in thoracic spine the dogger's hump and the gibbous whereas in lordosis excessive cervical and lumbar lordosis can create compressive forces posteriorly and distractive forces anteriorly correct then moving ahead we saw forward head posture where your head is going to ahead and what is happening gravity is pulling it anteriorly and to prevent that your cervical spine goes for excessive lordosis and there is compression in the posterior region along with extensor activity which causes muscle to get ischemic and the excessive isometric contraction of the muscle for long periods causes problems in the cervical spine finally we saw that the vital capacity the height is also reduced and overall it affects the individual right so with this we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video